Okay, so we've talked about how creatures can have different alleles that they carry around, and they carry different instructions. They can be brown eyes, blue eyes, or curly hair, straight hair. And if you have two different alleles in you, then they kind of compete, and one of them wins and overrides the other one. And we've said that the dominant allele, the one that wins, we give a capital letter, and the recessive allele, the one that loses, we give a lowercase letter, and that's how we code these things. The trouble is that sometimes there's more than two different types of allele, and so we get a pecking order that's not just two alleles, but it can be three or four or eight, and unfortunately we only have two levels of capitalization in our alphabet, which means we can't just use capital letters when you've got a chain of more than two. What we do instead is just number them, and so you can have things like P1, P2, P3, P4. We can use symbols like this to designate alleles and the order that they are, the order they're in as far as dominance. One means most dominant, number one on the list, highest ranked, the champion. The number one ranked allele can override or dominate any of the others. The number two ranked allele can beat anybody except for number one, so this is the second most dominant. Third ranked allele can dominate number four but not any of the others, and the fourth ranked allele is the lowest one, it is the least dominant, or if you want it's the most recessive. Everybody else can override or dominate P4. And so if you have a combination, you're looking for the lowest numbered letter, and that will be the one that overrides all the others, and that's the trait that you expect to be expressed. Fair enough? So if we had several levels of capitals, we wouldn't need to do this, but since we don't, anytime there's more than two alleles, this is the system we switch to. And a favorite example is the Drosophilia fruit fly, which geneticists work with a lot. They have a couple of traits that are easy to read, like the shape of their wings and the color of their eyes. They breed really fast, they're fairly easy to take care of, and so you're going to see them a lot as examples. And one of the traits they have is the color of their eyes. And their eyes can be four different types. You can have wild type eyes, and when you say wild eyes you think of a crazy looking insect, but what it actually just means is their eyes are red. E2, the next step down, is apricot, kind of an orange, orangey yellow color. E3 is a little browner, they call it honey color, and the most recessive is white. Now, that allele list isn't too bad. If you try to do all the possible phenotypes, you can go a little crazy because the list of pheno or sorry, genotypes gets a little long. I'll, I'll do it quick once just so you can see. You can have E1 with another E1. You can have E1 with E2. You can have E1 with E3. You can have E1 with E4. So I did all the ones that start with E1. Now I'm going to go again with the E2s. I'm not going to do E2, E1 because I have that already. Remember our rule, you always put the most dominant thing first, which means if you're starting with E2, that means E2 has to be the most dominant one in the pair. You shouldn't be saying E2, E1. You could say E2, E2, or you could say E2, E3, or you could say E2, E4. All those are okay. So I've done the ones that start with E1, I've done the ones that start with E2, I can start with E3, and that could go with another E3, or it could go with E4. Once again, I can't do E3, E1, or E3, E2, because in those cases I'm putting them in the wrong order. I'm putting the more dominant one second, and you're not supposed to do that. So these are the only valid pairs that start with a 3, and there's only one pair that can start with E4, and that would be E4, E4. 
if this were any other number, you'd be saying, wait a minute, that should have gone first. So the only, if you start with E4, the other allele must also be an E4. So it can be kind of a drag writing all these out, and you may not necessarily have to. You can usually figure them out on the fly just by looking at the more dominant allele and saying, okay, this is, these are all wild type. This is all wild type, and then something else that gets overridden by wild type. These are all going to be apricot, these are all going to be honey, and this is the only way that you get white. So, once you have that legend done, you can then do a Punnett square in the usual way and figure out your genotypes and phenotypes. Nothing is really different except for this notation looking a little odd for the first little while that you work with it. So, let's get an example up here and see if we can handle this. I'm not going to have room to fit that whole table in, so I'll just blow it away and we'll make up our own. Okay, what is the genotype of a fly that is E2, E3? Well, 2 is higher ranked than 3. Um, as a martial arts fan, I think of this as the number 2 ranked fighter faces the number 3 ranked fighter. The number 2 should win. They're, they're higher ranked, they should be a little tougher. If there's a conflict between these two, the number two should come out on top. So this is the trait that will be expressed, and if you remember, E2 stands for apricot. So this fly should have apricot-colored eyes. If you're E3, E4, this is the third ranked faces the fourth ranked. Third ranked wins. And E3, you will remember, or I hope I remember correctly, stands for honey color. A fly will have honey colored eyes. And E1, E4. E1 is the most dominant on the entire list, so as soon as you see this, automatically you know they're what they call wild type or red eyes. E1 equals red. We don't need, we don't care what the other allele is. It can't possibly have overcome E1. E1 is the most dominant. It wins every time. Not bad so far. Um, now that I look at it, the table in this next problem, oh, what the heck, I'll do it again. They ask us to fill in this table in the last problem where we do all the possible genotypes for each of these eye colors. And I did them already a little earlier. I'll put them down again just in case you want to follow through or in case you want to hit pause and try to do it yourself and then see if we agree. Wild type red is the E1 combination. So that's going to be E1 with another 1, E1 with a 2, E1 with a 3, or E1 with a 4 most dominant goes first, and you do every combination that starts with E1, because all of these will be wild type because of the E1, and then there's some other allele that kind of doesn't matter. If it's apricot, that means the most dominant thing it has must be the apricot allele E2, and that can be matched with a 2 or a 3 so go, or a 4. And if you have the honey, that means the most dominant allele you have is the honey, which means it could be double threes, or it could be a three with a four. The three is winning either way. And if you have a white, that means the E4 allele is the most dominant you have. The only way that happens, this is like your homozygous recessive, the only way white comes through is if you have double white. Anything else would have overridden or dominated it. Good. More examples coming up.